We're learning the Electoral Commission of Ghana has declared the rerun primary of the new patriotic party parliamentary that's election there null and void. We have the details coming through right now. It's breaking news, fresh on the plate. Stay with us here on Ghana tonight. Eight presidential aspirants, including the ruling parties, Dr. Mahmoud Bamiya and the main opposition's John Mahama, filed nominations to contest the December poll. We'll tell you who the candidates are and what is next for them. Stay with us. Still with us on your election command center. Still, the NDC, as indicated, they will embark on a nationwide demonstration on September 17 to demonstrate and demand an independent forensic audit of the voters' register. Going into election 2024, December 7. We have that for you and more here on Ghana Tonight. And we have eyes and a conversation on illegal mining. Today, it was topical at the opening of the bar conference in Kumasi in the Ashanti region. A number of reactions to it. Stay with us. We're getting to it here on Ghana Tonight. But the breaking news coming through right now is that the parliamentary primary rerun for the MPP in the Walewale constituency, the home constituency of the flag bearer of the MPP, Dr. Mahmoud Obamia, has been declared null and void. It's of no effect. It would not hold will tell you exactly why that decision was communicated by the electoral commission officials not too long ago that's breaking news coming through right now here on your election command center stay with us we'll cross over to wale wale shortly my colleague william evans income and the team they are there throughout the day we'll give you an update on that coming through right now and some violence that we witnessed in fact um, not too long ago as well will we'll tell you what is happening there and the security situation there on the ground but right now Let's settle for Ghana Briefs. The NPP Walewale primary has been halted after chaos broke out, leaving the outcome of the strongly contested election in Limbo, a fracas inside the auditorium of the Pentecost Church where cast ballots were being sorted for counting got interrupted when one Kamara allegedly tampered with ballot papers. The chairman of the election committee is meanwhile blaming the electoral commission and the police for not doing enough to protect the ballots. We started voting peacefully. Delegates started voting. There was no issue. Both candidates, Al Alaji Kabir was here, Hajia was here. Everybody was voting peacefully. Until when we finished voting around 4 o'clock and we start sorting. The sorting was going all right. About two, three minutes for the sorting to be ended. We don't know where a strange person. Uh, uh, Kamara, I don't know him. It's Kamara. No, 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 no. no. Uh, they, he's called Kamara. And uh, me, I don't know him. So I have already told police people that they should focus on, they should focus about that. You see, we don't know where he just, he came, the guy came and destroyed all papers. But God willing, all the papers are still in, in the hand of the police. The supervision of the election, is has been done by the EC and today, the EC are there. Even before we start sorting, I've already told the EC that they should be focused and they should make sure that nobody come there to what, to distract anything. <music> Flag bearer of the new patriotic party, Dr. Mahmoud Baumia, former president John Dramani Mahama, and six others have filed their nomination forms at the EC head office in Accra to contest for the December 7 general elections. On day one of the form submission exercise, chairperson of the Electoral Commission, Jun Mensa, noted all forms submitted will be scrutinized. Madame Jun Mensa made this known as the commission welcomed eight presidential aspirants who submitted their nomination forms today. They have been tasked to be fair and yet firm in executing their duties. We have no doubt, ladies and gentlemen, that the process will be transparent fair and peaceful. Additionally, we are confident that the five-day period provided for the filing process, as opposed to the two-day process prior to 2020, we are now enough time for presidential candidates to correct errors identified in their forms. 
We are confident that this will eliminate the tensions and rancor that characterize the filing process prior to the 2020 election. The flag bearer of the NDC has declared a nationwide demonstration by all supporters of the party against the Electoral Commission on September 17 over the illegal transfer of votes. The concerns, as expressed by the NDC and other stakeholders, have been grounded on the possibility of the EC denying many innocent voters an opportunity to cast their ballots. Voters register no buy no. You and you may be a to see our register no. Now say a person about to only a co year. Now assume you at Ghana. Now it was an electoral commission at a sorry a year with you a year. I was almost as I register new year. Now and you I will register no more. No more CSC and them as I need to abba. In the NDC, the the chairman and the one now say say you be here or yet you be. Be a electoral commission office will be a district office. So I call the ano NDC for so I don't know you be share and talk here. Now yeah, your demonstration at home. Flag bearer of the People's National Convention, Bernard Mona, has called for calm among aggrieved individual party members following the outcome of the party's delegate congress. At a swearing in ceremony of national executives elect, the PNC flag bearer maintained that the party has been taken over by leaders to leave the legacies of Dr. Kwame Nkrumah, Imoro Igala, and Dr. Hilali Mann. The former presidential candidate of the PNC, Honorable David Abasara. You became national treasurer of our party. You became the presidential candidate of our party. The party has not treated you badly. It has given you the fair share of recognition. The least the party can expect from you is an appreciation. The University Teachers Association of Ghana, UTAG, has issued a September 30 ultimatum to government for all forms of mining in the country's forests, farms and water bodies be banned completely. It follows what the union says has been government failure to deal with the challenge despite many state-led interventions. In a statement, the group says they will partner all labor groups in taking action to halt their ongoing menace. <laughs> Some breaking news coming through right now here on your election command center, Ghana tonight. These are the declaration of the Wale Wale MPP rerun primaries has been declared null and void, and it's of no effect. It was a primary that, in fact, an election that took place earlier today with a number of the MPP that's uh, the members there duly going out to vote for their preferred candidate between Dr. Tia Kabiru Mahama and Adia Zueratu, who is also the incumbent member of parliament there. Now, what's happening is that as a result of some interference that took place during the counting and sorting of the ballots that were cast earlier today by those who went out to vote, the Electoral Commission that's supervising this Wale Wale NPP primary rerun has declared that election null and void. That's the information we're coming through with you right now here on your election command center. It's fresh on the plate. It's breaking right now. And my colleague William Evansinkum is there for us. He's connecting with us on Zoom right now to have an update on this. Uh, William, appreciate your time. Thank you for connecting with us here on Ghana tonight. This is the information that you came through earlier some few minutes ago. The Electoral Commission has declared this Wale Wale parliamentary primary rerun for the MPP null and void. What more do we know? Well, absolutely. So according to the Electoral Commission, some of the cut ballots 
were damaged uh, beyond recognition as to uh, which of the candidates uh, won those affected ballots. And for that reason, they could not assign to any of them. And based on that, uh, they needed to declare the entire result now and void. Now it is up to the National Council of the ruling New Patriotic Party to take a decision. And the third national vice chairman of the party, who also happens to be the uh, election committee chairman, Alaji Masawood Osman, said National Council will take a decision on that. Of, of course, the Electoral Commission said that at this stage, they have nothing to do because they were only invited by the party to conduct the, I mean, supervise or see to the con conduct the, I mean, the conduct of this particular election and they have done their part so the rest uh, will have to be executed by the party and that has also been referred to the higher decision uh, and making body of the ruling party as the national council and they will have to take a decision on this particular uh, exercise uh, as to whether there's going to be another way around or they will have to uh, i mean make some level of compromises as far as uh, uh wale wale Parliamentary candidate tickets at some time. I see. Uh, and William, stay with me because uh, we have that video of the returning officer making this announcement that because some of the ballot papers were destroyed, they have no option than to declare this election null and void. Take a look. A certain man from nowhere came in and stuck the ballot papers. Destroy most of them. The police were able to manage to arrest the, the person. He is right now in the police custody. Then we salvaged some of the ballot papers that have been damaged. We brought it to the police station. We called the two sides, Tabiru side, then the uh, Ajia, Laribas uh, uh, people. Ajia people were there. When we call uh, Dr. Kabiru's uh, agents, they came here. If you saw them, they were here. They told us categorically that they will not take part today nor tomorrow. But per our rules, we have to continue to do the sorting. We opened the ballot box. After the sorting, we saw that some of the ballot papers are badly damaged in such a way that you cannot determine it for candidate A, not party uh, uh, candidate B. We made some consultation, and that was very difficult situation. We found ourselves. As you cannot, some of the ballot papers are damaged, and for that matter, you cannot determine. You see that uh, we have to stop there for the party to take the, their decision on that whether they will they they will ask us to continue to do another elections. That one will come from it is MPP selection. This is an internal party decision. Well, that's an internal party decision, and we're going to wait to see what the NPP will do after today. Because, William, this, this incident that happened earlier, that you make reference to reason why the Electoral Commission returning officer, we just heard from him, indicating that they had taken a decision to declare this election null and void. It followed the same script. And what happened in January, on the 27th of January, that disputed results... That, that saw Dr. Kabil Tia Mahama declared as winners with some 345 of the votes as against uh, Ajazuratu, who is incumbent, with some 338. That has been quashed. But if you recall, on that same day, similar incident happened. There was some interruption, and then it led to some skirmishes at the, at the counting and sorting center. And as a result of that, that election results was a subject of dispute. Now the Electoral Commission don't, doesn't want to also waste too much time, is it not? And that's why they, they take this position. Well, absolutely. So the only difference is that um, a Tamale High Court nullified the January results, and now the Electoral Commission has also nullified the September results. But it begs one question, and exactly what I asked uh, Alhaji Masawudi Osma, because it was the same committee that supervised the January election, and I asked him a very simple question, whether they have failed, the party, uh, because they were supposed to organize an election without any uh, hatred. 
but the, the election committee, rather he will blame the police and of course the electoral commission for not protecting the ballot. And uh, exactly what he told me is, uh, uh, I mean, uh, just after that incident. I see. Now, you, you spoke to uh, a chairman of the NPP um, in the region, that is in the constituency, that the Walla Walla constituents specifically, and, and he did give you an indication of what might be the case going forward. I want us to take a listen to him. The, the chair of the election committee, whom you spoke to this evening, in fact, just about an hour ago, we got this information from the chair of the election committee in that constituency, the Wale Wale constituency. That's the constituency of the vice president, the flag bearer of the MPP, Dr. Mahmoud Obami. And that's why this is of keen interest to the MPP and to the extent that these two persons, in fact, Dr. Tiakabiru Mahama is connected to the vice president, the flag bearer of the party. He works with the, Dr. Mahmoud Obami as his economic advisor in the vice president's office. Haja Zueratu is also being described as the sister of, of the vice president. And so the vice president has not been openly heard speaking about this matter all throughout the period till now. And in fact, William, with, with the violence that happened today, you are there. This didn't come to you as a surprise, is it not? Because of what happened on Saturday in front of that radio station, the, the, that you know, violence that you, you recorded earlier as well. What you saw today certainly wasn't a surprise, isn't it? Well, absolutely. Uh, make a reference to what happened on Saturday night, yes, maybe yes. But on Sunday, the vice president met the delegates, and of course, the party leader should care. And he was very clear to them that he is not supporting of the party, even though um, he had actually expressed some reservations about how Dr. Kabi uh, handled matters, especially working in the same office and he not being in the norm of his intent to contest him. Uh, in for the Walewale MPP ticket. It, it, it was something that uh, saddened his heart and he found the past house uh, when he met uh, the uh, party members. Of course, this included the uh, constituency executives and that of the candidate, the reception of Dr. Kabiru, um, who uh, wasn't part of that particular meeting, but some of his supporters or most of his supporters were there to listen to the vice president. And many thought that, well, uh, they would have to the vice president. And of course, uh, we, were, we weren't going to see some level of escalation. Uh, but that did not happen today. Uh, I'm pretty sure, well, I, I don't know what would be going, what would be running through the mind of the vice president if, uh, if, he, if, he, if he see some of the footages. But I, I wouldn't be surprised. I would be so much disappointed um, because he had given the a clear directive, and there was some level of assurance that they were also going to comfort themselves. But I'm pretty sure that, as human as he is, he will be very, very disappointed. Mm -hmm. Nonetheless, this is a human institution, and sometimes the social scientists will tell you that human beings can be unpredictable. And exactly what we saw this evidence. Indeed, and, and I see the level of security that has been beefed up in that constituency because of all we've seen throughout the day, and where you are standing. There's a, there's a police vehicle behind you with a number of the police personnel on the street. Paint to us how the security situation looks like as we speak. Well, so it's been uh, centralized at the moment, or let me say, uh, uh, some level of concentration. So um, this is the only part of the town that you see a number of policemen because uh, that a few, or behind me is the police, uh, is the police station. So behind me is the military vehicles. And then we also have a couple of uh, police vehicles uh, there. Uh, uh, because there was so much concentration here before the ballot boxes were brought here. And they are still here uh, to, uh, because the ballot boxes are still here. So the military men and that of the uh, uh, police, and that of the policemen are still here uh, protecting uh, this particular place. But beyond this point, I mean, life is normal. Let's see. Uh, William, appreciate you on this one and all the updates uh, throughout the day, every step of the way, together with the team there, Solomon, William Evansinkum, uh, Christopher Marco doing some good job there. William Evansinkum is our Northern Bureau Chief on the ground in the Wale Wale Constituency. It appears that your, your day is not going, in fact, not going to end today because tomorrow we're going to have to wait to hear what the MPP will decide.